discussing the procedures or discussing the standards. We are proposing here a process that is fair, deliberative, focused, and expeditious. Fair because it's logical. Before you can consider an impeachment, you have to consider what is an impeachable offense. You have to consider what is the standard for an impeachment. As the Judiciary Committee in the House adopted a standard 24 years ago, we should adopt a standard, or at least discuss and hold hearings on a standard. Once having done that, as our resolution provides, then one can ask the question, are any of, are any of Mr. Starr's referrals, are any of his 11 allegations, if they were proven to be true, do any of them these meet the standards of impeachment? Are they impeachable offenses? If the answer is yes for any of them, then one looks at the evidence with respect to those allegations and, and asks the question, do we have enough evidence to justify a formal impeachment proceeding to go forward on those allegations? And if the answer is no, that's the end of the matter. That is the only logical way to proceed to, in a fair and deliberative manner. We are proposing a focused uh, um, proceeding, focused on the charges leveled by Mr. Starr. That was what the uh, resolution of the House ordered us to do. In addition to which, of course, Mr. Starr has been investigating everything else for four or five years now. We presume that if there were possibly impeachable offenses with any evidence behind them and any of these other matters, Mr. Starr would have referred them to us by now. It is, of course, possible <coughs> that there'll be another referral, in which case the House can decide how to deal with that then. But what we have before us now is what we should deal with now and what the committee should deal with and not start, start an open-ended, possible two-year politicized fishing expedition. This is the fair way to proceed, not only fair to the president, but fair to the American people. And the only way that gives us some assurance that the results whatever they may be, will be accepted by the American people as a consensus accepted when President Nixon was forced from office in 1974 that will guarantee that we don't have recriminations either way and that the legitimacy of American political institutions are not brought into question. So we will urge this on the committee, and I hope that anyone of a fair mind will, will accept some version of this resolution as the way to proceed. Thank you. The chairman or the ranking member of the subcommittee on the Constitution of Judiciary is the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Bobby Scott. Thank you, Mr. Conyers, and it's a pleasure to be here to talk about a plan that's fair, focused, deliberate, and if we proceed in that way, it'll also be expeditious. Our complaint so far is, is, it, is that there has been no deliberation. We've had these document dumps without any deliberation, without any thought, without any uh, attention to whether it's relevant to anything before us, and without uh, any regard to whether there's embarrassing detail, uh, dragging innocent people's names through the mud without any thought of whether it's relevant or not. In the Watergate proceedings, the president had an opportunity to review the documents before they were released. We were denied, he was denied that opportunity. In fact, nothing was released unless it pertained to an article of impeachment that was actually adopted. There is information in the Watergate proceedings that hasn't been released yet because it wasn't relevant to counts that we adopted. In the Iran-Contra proceedings, people whose names were mentioned in the report had an opportunity to see the report 30 days in advance, and when the report was issued, their statement was issued along with it. Now we're going to consider on Monday a motion to open up an open-ended fishing expedition, unfocused, uh, without any deliberation first on whether or not we have any impeachable offenses before us. We're just asking for a fair process. Uh, obviously, with the, uh, with the controversy that there is in America today as to whether or not there are even any impeachable offenses before us, that ought to be the first order of business. I, I held a town hall meeting yesterday in my district where we talked about the background of impeachment, the history, historical perspective, how it fits into our form of government, and noticed that there is a wide-scale skepticism about many of the counts, and in some ways, all of the counts. And that ought to be, in any deliberate fashion, the first order of business. Do we have any impeachable offenses before us? And if so, we ought to focus on those, on those particular uh, allegations. 
Anything that's done with out of that, or out of that order is inherently suspect. And uh, with the voting out of order, we're going to have a hearing on impeachment after the vote on Monday. Uh, that makes about as much sense as an Alice in Wonderland where they sentenced first and then had a trial. Well, we're going to vote first and then have a hearing. That's not deliberate and that's not fair. Miss uh, Solofgren of California uh, was a principal <laughs> contributor to the alternative that we're discussing today. Thank you. I uh, am hopeful that our uh, colleagues on the other side of the aisle will accept this uh, proposal in the spirit in which it is given. This is a plan which, as you've heard, is orderly, it meets the constitutional requirements, and it can yield a result in a timely fashion. Uh, I am hopeful that we can get back to the kind of comedy that existed 24 years ago when the country last considered uh, the possibility of impeachment of the executive. You know, I'm concerned because I, I hear a lot of kind of gotcha games that are going on in this town, and I think that's terribly inappropriate. For example, I recently heard someone on the other side of the aisle make the statement, well, there was no time limit uh, in 1974. There was no limit whatsoever. I, they surely must know that that was not correct. Recently, I reread uh, the debate from February 6, 1974, on that matter. And I think it's interesting to point out that Mr. Rodino, the then chairman, promised that they would set a timetable. They, their goal was to end it by April 30th. And the then minority leader, uh, Mr. Rhodes, said, um, the gentleman's word is good with me. They didn't need to put it in the resolution. He said the gentleman had... Uh, credibility and that he'd earned it and that was enough well let's get back to that kind of comedy where we can work together where we can earn each other's trust whether we can put where we can put the cart in front of uh, in back of the horse where it belongs where we can put uh, the Constitution first and move forward in an orderly uh, process I'd like to say this has been a very uh, good experience for me and other members of the Judiciary Committee to put this plan together uh, we all come from different parts of the country, from Mr. Boucher's rural conservative uh, Virginia district to my Silicon Valley district to Maxine Waters' inner city uh, Los Angeles district. We come from different parts of the country, but we can reach common ground about what's important, our constitutional obligations, fairness, and promptness. So I, I issue a call to our colleagues to embrace this and to stop the partisan fighting. Thank you, Zoe. What can I say about Maxine Waters, who uh, not only serves with distinction on our committee and helped uh, put together this alternative, but in her spare time chairs the Congressional Black Caucus as well? Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank John Conyers and the Democratic members of the Judiciary Committee for the time and effort that they have put in on making sure we come up with a fair plan. It has been a wonderful experience working together, thinking through all that we will be confronted with and coming to consensus that allows us to be here today. From the moment the special prosecutor made the September 9, 1998 referral to the House of Representatives. Some of us have insisted on making fairness our top priority as we consider this information transmitted to us for possible impeachment. The special prosecutor had already gained a reputation for witch hunting and abuse of power. Therefore, some of us felt we must not take anything for granted. We must approach this process carefully and devise a plan and process that would be fair to the accused. The very first sign of trouble came when the Republicans moved to dump the first 445 pages of the referral in the public domain without giving the President or the Judiciary Committee the opportunity for review. The Republicans immediately poli uh, politicized the entire procedure and began to polarize the public and attempted to intimidate members of Congress. Since that time, just 10 days later, 
Another 3,000 pages of materials were further dumped on the public. The media reported on this in bits and pieces, in many cases, choosing those sections that were most salacious. The Republicans then began to spin the president's grand jury video testimony and wetting the appetites of the press, who then donated four hours of review to the entire testimony. Despite the fact the president comported himself rather well, the viewing further created and expanded the politics of impeachment. This sorry state of affairs now has become the political strategy for the November elections. Members are watching the polls, ads are playing, and being designed around the impeachment question. And there are no guidelines from the Republicans for an orderly way to proceed. The public is saying enough of the sex soap opera and salacious materials. Keep it out of the press and off the internet. The public is saying, get this thing over so we can focus on America's agenda for progress. The Republicans have no agenda, and their only counter to a strong Democratic platform is to try to blow up and keep a scandal alive. Today, the Democrats on the Judiciary Committee present a well thought through and orderly agenda that will move America back to the issues that we want to debate. The plan will, number one, allow the Judiciary Committee to hold hearings on the constitutional standard of impeachment. As Bobby Scott said, until we have that discussion to talk about what did the Constitution mean when it talked about high crimes and misdemeanors, when are we going to bring in the experts and the scholars to debate this? and to talk about what happened in 1974 so that we can reach some kind of standard. The committee will compare the allegations to the constitutional standard for impeachment. We have 11 allegations sent to us, just 11 of them, listed by the special prosecutor without supporting evidence that's been cross-examined. Are they real? Does it make good sense? We think that needs to be examined. Number three, determine if there is sufficient evidence to move forward with an inquiry of impeachment. We should not be talking about moving forward to a vote on an inquiry without having gone through these steps. If the Republicans reject this plan, they will be guilty of stonewalling and dragging out this process, like some of them would like to do, until the year 2000 in an effort to affect the presidential race. The Republicans want to, want to move beyond the scope of what has been presented by Ken Starr for political reasons. Today, Democrats offer a fair procedure and process plan because it is in the best interest of the nation. And it established a framework so that everyone, including the press, will know what to expect. I thank you, and I thank these members again who have worked so hard uh, to make sense out of this process and lay something on the table that everybody can understand. Well, you've heard now from the five who have crafted this alternative. I want you to know that we're joined by our other colleagues on judiciary who were also very helpful. Mel Watt, Sheila Jackson Lee, Bill Delahunt, Bob Wexford, and uh, who are all here. Marty Meehan, my neighbor. OK. <laughs> and. Uh, if, if there is a one or two burning questions, we would be happy to entertain them at this point. Just, just a moment. Or, order. Order shall be maintained. Are all of the Democrats on the committee going to vote for this alternative? All of them? Well, I haven't canvassed anybody. We're putting this forward as our sensible proposal. Uh, uh, yes. We, 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 we all right. Who wants to respond to that? I, I think all the members oh, of the committee I'm will make independent judgments, but as of this moment, we believe all the Democrats will vote for this resolution. Do you expect the, against the Republican proposal? Against the Republican resolution. Wait a minute. We're, we're, we're starting off in a predictive mode, which is not very good for press conferences. Uh, most of us are as, as concerned as we can be with how we're going to vote. Uh, we are not canvassing. Uh, we have a sense of a feeling that the members of our committee are 
behind us, the Democratic members, but there have not been any canvases, as, as Jerry uh, has said. Who had a question over here? Yes, sir. Conyers, uh, could you uh, tell me, or maybe one of the members of your law firm here, uh, <laughs> how you could be both deliberate and expeditious? Well, that, that may seem like a stretch, uh, but being deliberate does not exclude being expeditious, sir. And uh, I, I think I've had that question before a time or two. I mean, the, the, point, the point of the matter is, is that we have to move forward and out of this morass. Nobody here has to conduct a poll uh, in, their, uh, uh, in their district to find out what most people in this country want. We know it's five to one, 10 to one. Get rid of this matter as quickly as you can. That's a message that goes through and resonates in Republican and Democratic uh, districts across this country. So there is, there is no uh, legal technicalities, hang-ups, or problems with doing both of these, accomplishing both of these uh, goals at the same time. And, 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 wait a minute. Whoa, 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 just a moment. And there's, and there's, one, there's one point that needs to be made, and that is the last paragraph in the, well, shows that the deliberative, fair process will take precedence over a fixed timeline. We think we can do it within this timeline, but if a fair, honest, focused uh, type uh, report takes a little longer, then it'll just take longer. If you're talking to concern about the liberty, there's nothing in the Republican poll. Let me, let, 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 let me add, the central point of this is to say that you have to set up a logical and deliberative and fair process. So it says the first thing you do is you have a few days of hearings and a determination of what's an impeachment standard, of, of, of what's an impeachment standard. Then it provides for a few more days of hearings and a determination as to um, which of the allegations meet that standard, if any, if any. Obviously, if any, all, none, some. Then it provides for a few, for a few days of hearings and then a determination a few days of evidentiary hearings as to whether there's enough evidence on those you've determined, if any, meet the standard, uh, as to whether there's enough evidence to justify going forward. And then it provides that the committee determines whether you should go forward and, and, and with formal hearings. Then it provides time for formal hearings, uh, if necessary, and it provides for a vote by the committee and time for the House to consider that, and time for a vote by the House on impeachment, if necessary and all of that by November 25th, and then it provides, and we think we provided enough time by November 25th in two phases, but then it provides that the committee can go to the House and ask for an extension of time if it's just impossible by November 25th, and we need a couple of more weeks. The point of this is you can be deliberative and logical, not simply vote on a, on a motion to proceed to formal hearings without considering any evidence or any standards or what the Constitution means. You've got to do it all in the logical way, so you set standards first, determine whether those standards are met by any of the allegations, determine whether there's any evidence, and then consider it. It sets the time for that, and at the same time, it sets a deadline that we think can be met by Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving, and provides an out if a few weeks more are needed, and doesn't allow what we fear would happen without such a process, which is the possibility of a two-year political fishing expedition. Uh, two, two more questions from very reasonable members of the press like all of you are. Here's one. Uh, I think most of you have indicated that you don't think that the president's behavior meets the standard of impeachment. If that, in fact, is the case, why are you introducing a resolution to begin with? Well, if you heard anybody say that this morning, uh, we, we would like to take you up on that later. And I don't take back the reasonableness description that I attributed to you. Uh, because we, uh, well, I'm sorry, sir. Would you would you care to uh, determine how many questions we're going to take today? Yeah. Yeah. More. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, I'd, I'd like to propose this to Ms. Lofgren. Uh, Ms. Lofgren, you say that you want to end partisanship here. Aren't you merely antagonizing the Republicans by coming up with a resolution that really has no chance on Monday? They have the votes. It's a 37-member committee. They have the votes. Aren't you really just trying to exasperate the... No, I'm not trying to exacerbate it. You know, we know that the Republicans can control everything that happens in the House because they have more votes. 
just as the Democrats could do the same thing in 74. And the question is how one uses that power and whether we can step back from where we are and say we don't have to just keep fighting, we can come together in a way that's wholesome and good for the country. And that's hard to do. I'm not discounting that that is an easy thing to do, but it is a possible thing to do. And, and so rather than uh, speculate that we will have a huge fight on Monday, I would ask uh, those of you here to at least allow Republicans some time to look at this and think about it, and maybe we can come together. Let's, let's, let's leave that opportunity open for our country. Mr. Nadler, can you um, explain, as I read your um, proposal, this, you may not even open an inquiry at all. Is that correct? I mean, unlike the Republican proposal, you're saying that there may be nothing here to um, open a formal inquiry Well, first on. of all, the Republicans are saying that they will have a vote on an inquiry uh, Monday or Tuesday, and I presume that they allow for the possibility the vote might be no, although some of them have said they, they should vote yes. Yes, we are saying that. We are saying that to take the very serious step of opening formal impeachment proceedings requires at least a basic showing. And so far, there has been no basic showing because all we have is that is, 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 is a, of necessity, one-sided presentation by a prosecutor. Remember, none of the evidence that the prosecutor has put forward, none of the witnesses have been cross-examined, uh, nothing has been subject to criticism, uh, and so forth. It's a one-sided presentation, which is what a prosecutor's job is. I'm not, although I think he's deserving of criticism, I'm not now criticizing him. We have to at least look and say, what are the, you know, what are the standards for impeachment? Do any of the allegations meet the standards? And if so, is there enough evidence to go forward and determine that and then vote whether to have formal impeachment so proceedings? Require another vote of the committee well, under your... the committee would determine, and the precise language is, um, the committee would, if the committee, if the committee finds there is a necessity for further proceedings, it it shall then be in order for the committee to conduct formal inquiry proceedings. It wouldn't need a vote on the House floor. It would need a vote of the committee, presumably, to say yes or no. Mr. Adler, you, said, uh, you said just a moment ago that um, the uh, submission by Star, or that the submission by Star was one-sided, and then earlier Mr. Uh, Conyers had said that. Um, the process would be based uh, or would be limited to the referral of the independent counsel. Does this exclude any other information that Starr may have or, uh, or any other uh, evidence that you may gather? Or in other words, would you proceed only on the basis of this, the Starr referrals and, well, and I, then I gather think, inf other information later? I, I think you're asking two questions. One, are we going, does, under our proposal, would we look at uh, allegations on other matters that Starr didn't refer? And the answer is no. This, the, the instructions given us by the House were to look into the, the allegate, were to look into the referral, and we want this to be focused and look into that. As I said before, as some, and as some others have said, um, if, if someone else, if someone comes up, if, if the special prosecutor comes up with a new referral, the House would have to decide how to handle that. Um, but, but, um, but right now, keep it on that. Would we look at other evidence of the allegations that Mr. Starr uh, made? Presumably, if someone came forward with other evidence, it's in order for the committee to look at anything. Uh, Rick, did you want to say something? Wait a minute. Uh, 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 wait a, hold on. Just, just a moment. Did you want to make an intervention? Well, I've just been told by our, our press person that this, this space has been reserved by someone else, and we're 15 minutes past our reservation date. But, um, this is directed at all the members. Yes. Can, can you just, in turn, tell tell uh, tell me how much time you spent reviewing the documents? Um, each of you, in turn, just ballpark one Days hour. Days or no hours? Uh, well, either Nights depending upon each member. Holidays? Uh, no, I, I, uh, no. Uh, more time than right. I would. Well, I know that's I know that's I know that's critical, sir. You don't have to justify, it, uh, but we'll get to it as soon as we get uh, a couple of responses that, that need a little explication. Bill Delahunt, I'd, I'd like you to come forward for just a moment. You know, I, I just want to read something to, in response to one question that was posed regarding bipartisanship. And I, I think it's important to understand that you have to look closely at the resolution. And I would also refer you 
to the statement by the chairman of the Rules Committee, Mr. Solomon. In this language, I suggest, infers that there ought to be a preliminary review, if you will, so that we could discharge our responsibility in a constitutional fashion. Now, I'm quoting from Mr. Solomon in his statement uh, at the Rules Committee. It's anticipated that the Judiciary Committee may require additional procedural or investigative authorities to adequately review this communication in the future. Those authorities may be the subject of another re resolution before this committee next week. In other words, what I suggest is that there is a recognition that Mr. Starr is not an agent of the House of Representatives. It's the Judiciary Committee, and that there ought to be some process to review the allegations and the evidence that was submitted in the communication. You know, maybe there has been a change in attitude on the part of the Republican leadership, but I think this is evidence that it was anticipated that there would be some sort of fair, expeditious, and deliberative process. Could I, could I just do, uh, in fairness, uh, that he he has agreed, yes. Contact Mr. Starr? Yes. We are writing a joint letter together to find out if there are any other referral materials so that this isn't a guessing game. And he thought that that was perfectly fair. Will we see that letter today? Mr. Connors, you answer the question about how much time we just, have Just a moment, please. Uh, would you make you a, just a... Can you answer that question, Congressman? Uh, yes, I'm desperately afraid. <laughs> I, I've never, I was sweating. Yeah, I, I, I'm all due respect. Yes, with all due respect, would, would you please hold it? Thank you very much, Mr. Conyers. Let me um, uh, tell you what America actually has. And for many of us, uh, we have heard accusations that we are poll watchers. And I don't think that is what the Democratic judiciary members are saying today. What they're actually saying today is that the American people have spoken about fundamental fairness and the Constitution. And as their only backdrop, they have watched and listened to the facts of the Watergate proceeding in terms of fairness. What you have today is what the American people, listening and understanding what the Constitution provides, fundamental fairness, a right for the accused to present their evidence, to be heard, to be cross-examined, to be questioned. And you also have, in particular, right out of the language of the Watergate staff report, the response that the House does not engage in abstract or hypothetical debates about the precise nature of conduct that calls for the exercise of constitutional powers. What the Republicans have done since September 11th is engage in hypotheticals, have engaged in theories, but not in facts. This particular document emphasizes that we must engage in the facts with the undergirding of the Constitution. And I'm reminded by members of the Watergate proceedings, in particular Barbara Jordan, who said she was not going to stand by and see the Constitution diminished. This is the answer to the American people. They are asking us to do our job deliberately, focused, and with fairness. This provision, this uh, layout that we've given you today says to the Republicans on the committee, will you join with us to answer the question of whether or not there are any issues dealing with impeachment? Will you do it in fairness? Will you do it with an understanding of the con Constitution? Will you be focused and will you cease and desist from witch hunting and a fishing expedition? I really think that if you would raise this debate to the level that we needed to be raised over these two days, these 48 hours, sensitize the American people have Republicans go back to their districts. I can't imagine that we won't vote for this on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, pardon, pardon me. Uh, it, it's, it's not on the table at this point. Uh, it, it is an option in the resolution, uh, but we have not given it a life of its own. Uh, how would I know? If you look, do you have the resolution? Take a look at um, page three. Take a look at page three. And 
if you follow the process in an orderly way, you can get there, you can get to impeachment, you can get to censure, you can get to nothing. But it should be based on the law, the Constitution, and the facts, not just jumping to conclusions. Now, uh, let me tell you about how much reading the ranking member has been doing of these uh, 37 boxes uh, of documents. Uh, dozens and dozens of hours. Don't these bags under my eyes tell you something? Doesn't this fatigued, uh, beat up look give way to the point that we are working to almost a, a kind of a breakdown? And whether the members are keeping a tally of the hours they study in their office, the hours they meet with their council, the hours they go to the Ford building, uh, I would leave it up to them to respond to you. And I'm sorry, with great sincerity, I hate to pronounce this press conference over. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. You guys are getting meaner. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking names. I'm noting now. Somebody's going to be, not all of you, but some of you. The, the tone is getting a little tougher. Vincent, Robert, Vincent, that's Robert. Vincent, that's Robert. It's only because you're the public. They're right there. We can have you all come no. here, please. Uh, we have an important no, 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 no. Let's get an important press conference in here. Yes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>